Join me today and learn how to find more morel mushrooms this spring. Welcome shroomers. Today on the Tattooed Granny channel, I have made for you the most complete morel mushroom hunting guide you're going to need this spring. Whether you're a new shroomer or an experienced mushroom hunter, you want to check out some of these tips. Also, you can click on the description box for more information and timestamps to jump forward and backward in the video to the areas you want to learn. Um, there's cooking, preserving, tree ID, habitat and timing, secrets. You kind of want to watch the whole video because my secrets are kind of sprinkled like magic throughout the whole thing. I hope you have a fabulous morel mushroom season this spring. As you can see, it's kind of snowy out yet. And here I am in an old apple orchard checking on my trees. Thank you so much. Join me today. Here are just a few tree species that are mycorrhizally associated with morel mushroom fruiting, particularly in the Midwest region of the United States. Here's some live, just sprouting elm leaves for you. Full size American elm leaves. So they look green. See the little ridges? This is a mature sized American elm leaf. You can see where the base attaches to the stem. It is asymmetrical. The leaf is oblong, oval in shape with a pointed tip, and the outer edges are all serrated on both sides. Bark from a freshly dead elm tree is rusty brown in color underneath and gray and flaky on top. Great example of elm bark, American elm. A great host tree when it dies for morels. And this to me looks like a freshly dead American elm. It's just starting to peel. Uh, look at how the roots have that kind of fingery look. They have shallow roots. And when you go up to the top, you can kind of see it spreads out like a martini glass. The bark itself is kind of orange underneath. As they start to die, they might get an orange or a white cast to them. Up higher, which it's hard to see, he's got kind of a white cast and no buds. That means deceased. And this year, we might hit the jackpot. This is the perfect habitat and time to find morel mushrooms. It is a young forest with plenty of dead elm trees. Warm 60 degree days and cool 40 degree nights with adequate precipitation and a soil temperature of roughly 55 degrees, four inches down into the soil. All these factors are perfect for morel fruiting. Okay, this is an epic multi-trunked dead elm tree. See how it flares at the top, fluted like a vase or a martini glass? Elm trees are one of the first species to bud out in spring, so it is quite easy to identify the living from dead trees. Not one bud or leaf should be on the dead American elm tree to produce morels. Apple trees are another favorite for morels to fruit, especially if they're stressed, dying, or dead. Make sure they're from an old organic orchard so you don't get any of the pesticides. I also get mine kind of, there's a farmer field there, but if you look here, the hill rises, and so the water comes down this way, and so you're not getting any of the pesticides that way. These apple trees, produce wonderful big meaty morel mushrooms every year for me. 
Apple tree bark looks surprisingly flaky and gray like elm bark. Apple tree, apple tree leaves look like this. Another tip is um, apple trees flower just about when it's fruiting time for morel. So when you're looking at these old gnarly apple trees, if part of them's alive, they'll have some flowers. You can use that also to ID. My morel producing apple trees are super big and old. I don't know if that makes a difference. Four inches into the soil today in January. We're just above freezing. It's a cold day. It's like in the 20s. I'm in the apple orchard, sort of southeast facing, so it should be the warmest we've got. I use this little mini trowel to dig a four inch hole so I don't ruin my probe, my digital probe. Our seed pods. So sycamore seed pods and leaves right there. See that on the ground you know you got the correct tree. This tree is often found lining riverbanks and morels fruit under live sycamore. And you see this weird peeling white bark? You're there. Awesome on to the next tree. Morels fruit on live white ash trees. About a week after they are done fruiting on dead elm trees, they like a little heat. Their bark is gray and deeply really fissured. X kind of bark, X shape, X, 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 right? And the branches come out at 90 degree angles to one another. Look at that, how cool is that? All the way up with all its markings, the bark and the branches that go up at 90 degree angles. Okay, leaves uh, are kind of like this, like this. Let's review the four trees we learned to identify today that love to fruit morels. Here are some of the other flowers, fungi, and wildlife you can expect to see when it's prime morel mushroom hunting time. Like this. This long way like this. And I want you to see that they are completely hollow. The cap joining into the stem hollow. These are actual pits, not waves, not ridges, not flaps. Pits. It's going to be blurry, but you know what? Get what I'm saying. There you go. We've been looking just for a few minutes and all my hard work finding these dead elm have paid off coming back a week later. Uh, we've already got a nice handful. Uh, it pays to really do your homework. Morel mushroom hunting isn't brain surgery, it's math. Miles walked plus correct trees found plus number of correct trees checked when the time is right. That equals more morel mushrooms. Learn the trees, watch the weather, and do the hiking. I promise you, it will pay off. The more morel producing trees you scope out, the more morel mushrooms you will find. Above all, don't get discouraged. I hunt exclusively on public land and I do okay. Back at the car. Shall we count our treasures? One, two, three.
Looking gorgeous. 87 mushrooms. I'm soaked. I hunted mushrooms on a rainy day in Wisconsin and got 87 mushrooms. I'm so happy. Found a little honey hole that people missed. Usual. And of course, there's all kinds of briars and stuff. Okay, and then this one, and then this. Okay, then we've got a. Okay, there's three of them. I see three more, four, five more. Okay, so, uh oh, what have we got here? My favorite. Okay. What's that? That's a granny. That's a granny. Our pile's getting bigger. <laughs> On our hands and knees. Way the rain came out and made them swell up, but also you get mold. I gotta pull that mold off. I don't want that. Okay, there's that. Now, uh, got one under here. There. And then more crawling. <laughs> I see two. You see them both? See the one up close and then the one further back. Oh, and then I almost missed <laughs> this guy. This guy right here. Oh, freaking hell, I'm caught. <laughs> I'm caught in the briar bushes. The briars. Oh. This is how you get mushrooms. You crawl for them. Oh, deep in the thickets. Deep in the thickets. This is a beauty. Okay. This is why no one else gets these. They're not willing to really go for it. All right. So, plus two in my basket. And we got all these. That's what we got right there. Uh, ten minutes on the trail. Five minutes picking. Butt on our hands and knees. Crawling like crazy. Check out my other playlists and videos to learn about other species of Choice Edible Spring Mushrooms. Okay, this is how 87 mushrooms look. Salted, peppered, floured with drakes. Cut in half, shook around. Put on a lined baking sheet for freezing. After they're fully frozen and hard, they'll break apart real easily and we'll put them in a vacuum sealed plastic bag dated and ready to fry in hot butter and oil when we want fresh tasting spring any time of the year. Dehydrating is another way to preserve morels, extend their shelf life, and intensify their flavor. This is a Nesco dehydrator I bought on sale for about 60 bucks um, at a Blaine's Farm and Fleet.
and it does a really good job. I use the lowest setting for herbs, not the one for fruits and veggies. Expect your morels to take several days to dry. Longer if you picked them in the rain, shorter if you picked them on a nice warm sunny day. After crunchy dry, I place them in a ball jar and they can last for years like that. Taste yummy rehydrated and cooked. This is what you want right here. I soak these in milk for 20 minutes, strain it, and cook for a great sauce. I use the lowest setting on my dehydrator. Even though it says to use a higher one, it takes the mushrooms longer to dry, but I find they have a, a perfect, beautiful scent and they don't smell burned. I think that higher temperature can kind of cook them instead of slowly dehydrate. You want this. I know you do. Ball jars, beautiful. This is the underside of my dehydrator where the heat comes out with a little fan in the center. And you can see morel spore prints from the mushrooms that were on the top shelf. Morels have light yellow spores. I store my jars of dehydrated morels inside large plastic tubs in a cool, dry location. Another way to cook morel mushrooms is old school. Fry them in a cast iron skillet with butter. Eat them just like that with a steak or pair with other dishes. Okay, our ingredients are fresh garden chives, morels picked today, parmesan, purple asparagus picked from my garden, ramps that I had frozen picked from my garden, huh, wine, nice smelling flowers. I've got truffle salt, freshly cracked, ground pepper. Stir fry everything in butter. Uh, make your spaghetti al dente, about six minutes. Toss, top with cheese, pepper and chives. Drink wine. There it is, my own creation. Cache Pepe and Pasta Primavera with morels and all those luscious ingredients I showed you earlier. Oh yeah. Super good. Morels are an earthy, meaty, delicious mushroom. I recommend pre-cooking them in butter before tossing them in your favorite pasta or placing them on a pizza for the oven. This is the Invasive Dames Rocket, D-A-M-E-S. It looks like Phlox, but it has only four petals. Dames Rocket has the four petals. True Phlox mostly has five petals. It comes up when the heat has hit enough to shut down morel fruiting. You may still find big morels up from earlier, but to me, when I see this, morel season's I'm done. today on the hunt for a choice edible. The introduced yellow oyster mushroom. When temperatures get too hot to fruit morels, like 90, and the soil heats up too much, these guys pop. They're good eating. When you see these mushrooms, morel season is officially over. All the oysters, and they're pinning all the way up the tree. Someone else can have these little bitty ones when they get bigger. Yellow oysters are saprophytic preferring to feed on dead elm, usually the same American elm you found your morels under, 
only they fruit after it's too hot for morels to fruit. They are delicious, choice edible with a sweet nutty flavor. They have a yellow funneled cap, white stems, and fruit in clumps. So when morel mushrooms are done, do not despair. Simply walk around your spots again and fill up your basket with delicious yellow oyster mushrooms. You're welcome. Thank you so much for watching today. If you learned something, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'd appreciate it. And happy hunting this season. Be the shroom. Oh yeah.